As Britney Spears once famously said, Oops, I did it again. Let's go take a look in the observatory and you can see what I'm talking about. Well guys, here I am in the observatory with said oops. And as you can see, it's a pretty big oops. Some may even call it a Celestron Edge HD 11 sized oops. And honestly, all jokes aside, I really am glad to have this thing in my scope arsenal now because of what it's gonna allow me to do. I am excited to get some decent hours of imaging underneath my belt with this thing. And uh, some of you may remember, just recently I purchased another used telescope, a Skywatcher Skymax 180 Pro Maxitov at 2700 mils of focal length. So just 100 mils shorter than this thing. And you may be wondering, you know, well, what's the need for this? And quite simply, it's because I can use this with a much larger camera for those deep space objects that I like to usually image uh, most of the year you know that's when the planets aren't up i still want to do long focal length work and this is going to fit into that perfectly so right now i've got this hooked up and actually tested with full frame camera which is going to allow me to have this is all relatively speaking a wide field of view at its focal length of 2800 millimeters uh pretty monstrous actually focal length for this thing i know that the the 14s are even longer but i don't really think i could fit a 14 in here even if i could afford one so this ended up absolutely perfect for me now i'm still of course going to be using the skymax on the planets and the moon and things like that as soon as the opportunity is available but all the rest of the time i think when i'm wanting to do normal long focal length imaging this is going to be a pretty great companion for that and i'm hoping to do a lot more on the live streams and things like that and share interesting small targets with you guys Thank you, by the way, to everybody who joined on my last live stream where I actually first teased this telescope and shared with you a little bit of EAA work on a few small targets. Uh, it was a lot of fun and I'm certainly looking to do more of that kind of thing. Now, as to the wires of long focal length, well, I used to believe, I really did used to firmly believe that Focal lengths above about 800 mils to 1,000 mils or so just quite simply weren't that usable in this country under my average seeing conditions. And I think that still holds true if you don't use Blur Exterminator. However, I do, you know what I mean? I bought these things for myself and I regularly shout them out on my channel. Uh, I've got the affiliate links for them and things like that. And a lot of people have bought them and they're just as happy as, as with those tools as I am. But it has allowed me to do is perform tests which i've shared with you on this channel which quite clearly suggest that focal lengths right up to 2000 mils and beyond it seems are perfectly usable when used in conjunction with blur exterminator it deconvolves all that atmospheric mess that you're usually imaging from in a way that would take you hours and hours and hours to do meaning quite simply that i can now use extremely long focal lengths and get those interesting fields of view that I was looking for kind of all astronomy career long uh, and still get crisp clean views I'll share with you just on the screen in a second my best ever image which is only 26 minutes by the way of M57 I managed to split a very tight group of stars next to it uh, right down into four components there are actually five and I'm sure I could split that fifth on a slightly better night but to me that immediately was an indicator of the efficacy of this kind of you know solution um i've never ever managed to do that before if you've taken images of m57 yourself um have a look see if you've managed to split those stars it, it's not easy to do so it's already an indicator of how good this thing actually is and what it allows me to reach now uh, which is really interesting to me at this point in my astronomy journey another advantage being in an observatory environment means that I can't have a too large telescope, like physically speaking. So whereas this is, you know, thick, it's girthy <laughs> through, if that's the uh, the right word, it's not too long, uh, which I can swing around in my observatory just about any pointing angle and never worry about collision with either the walls, the roof overhang, or the second pier, which is really important to me. Um, I do have my first oops of the year actually just on the other pier right off camera behind you and uh, with a longer sat telescope sometimes even my Rasa 11 I do worry about the chance of collision at certain pointing angles uh, depending on where the second scope 
is pointing. However, with this just being that tiny bit shorter, no worries whatsoever. So that's really good uh, from a, uh, a scope anxiety standpoint, I would say. Uh, another cool thing about it is that it's a sealed tube design, being a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. It's got a glass corrector plate at the front, which keeps this thing just about totally sealed from dust ingress, um, which is important in here because in a well-ventilated observatory, you are, of course, going to be carrying a lot of fresh air in and through, which is going to carry invariably with it some dust, which is going to get you know deposited onto your optics. You just can't help that kind of thing in anything other than a sealed tube. So uh, whereas this might get dusty on the top, it's not dusty yet, but it will be, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, it won't get dusty inside, so I'm never really going to be worried about trying to clean down that primary mirror, that kind of thing, which is something that's always an issue with, let's say, Newtonians, or to a lesser extent, the Richie Cretien that I was using here for a while. That didn't seem to be too too badly affected, as I usually kept it covered up my towels. Uh, but again, it's just another advantage for me. Now, it's not all, you know, upsides with this. It does pose extra challenges and in some cases extreme challenges too guiding being one of them uh so at 2800 millimeters of focal length guiding becomes incredibly difficult really so i've had to switch over now to an off-axis guider for this thing in order to actually manage to get anything like five minute subs perfectly done not that i'm normally using those right now it's actually a little bit shorter after recent <laughs> experiments but I can do those longer subs now. I've got off-axis guidance set up. I did try with a discrete guide scope, the one that had previously been guiding the RC10 trust tube, and it just couldn't manage the extra 800 mils of focal length. One other kind of negative point about this, uh, I, I bought the reducer along with it, just uh, actually hidden around here. <laughs> it's quite a chunk of glass, I have to say, but I'm not absolutely mad about its performance. Um, Indeed, when I first tried the reducer, the stars off to one side of the full frame were pretty terrible. It was probably all right over an APS-C, but on full frame, the stars along the left-hand side, just for example, were all majorly elongated, and it made me think that something was wrong. So I ended up getting out my digital calipers. I undid the front of the telescope, had a good look at the actual corrector plate glass itself in relation to that secondary mirror housing, and I determined that the housing was centered on the corrector plate but the corrector plate itself was majorly decentered on the telescope now some folks uh, would suggest and they are quite right that mechanical centering and optical centering are not the same thing and they aren't but in my case someone had taken this telescope apart at some point or another in order to flock the inside of the tube so i just assumed that they would have done uh, you know, an accurate job of putting it back in, but I don't think that they did, unfortunately, because it was skewed across to one side by about four mils, uh, which is quite a large amount, of course. So, I uh, recentered everything up, the corrector plate, tested again with the reducer, and I'm happy to report that those strange-looking stars are now completely fixed. So I've got that as an option too, 1960 millimeters of focal length at f7 with this thing, which is going to be interesting too, but... I do like its performance uh, with the full frame camera at its maximum focal length of 2800mm f10 so I'm probably going to use it in that configuration most of all. Well guys I hope that that kind of shares with you my plans for this thing what I've already experimented with it and I just thought I'd share with you a couple of different field of views uh, of the kind of expected things that we can view with this thing so there's the crap nebula at this sort of full frame and 2800mm focal length so still as you can see quite a tight in crop overall uh something like the hercules globular cluster which we just recently imaged on a live stream as you can see almost fills the field of view at this kind of focal length um m16 i took a very brief shot of this just as it was cresting nearby house roofs all these very fine targets that which i've always wanted to shoot for quite a long while now suddenly feel completely within my grasp and like realistic projects that I can undertake and hope to get a very nice end result from so I am excited about using this thing I have to say and uh, look to see much more coming from it in the coming months and over the coming seasons I think it's going to be a pretty long-term comparison um, a companion rather in the observatory so 
I'm going to leave it at about that for today, guys. Uh, look forward to seeing more of this as soon as the weather changes and I can share more with you. I will. And until the next one, just look after yourselves. As always, I'd like to say thank you for your support uh, in all the ways that you give it. It really does mean an absolute great deal to me. And it's thanks to you, really, that I can do things like this and get these dream telescopes for me and share them with you by extension. Uh, so very genuinely, once again, hand on heart, Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate you all out there. So I'm going to leave it at that. I could go on at extreme length with the uh, with the thanks because I really do mean it. But I'll cut myself short and just say thank you. Look after yourselves, and I will see you in the next one. So until then, clear skies.